Well, here's the movie pitch for Citizen Murdoch, a 21st century remake of the Orson Welles 1941 classic Citizen Kane about an enormously wealthy newspaper owner. Act one, a 42-year-old Australian newspaper owner starts buying American newspapers in 1973, moves to New York in 1974, and expands his wealth exponentially by buying his way into show business where he churns out of his Hollywood studio the same kind of movies and television programs that all of the studio studios and networks are doing. In 1985, he becomes a U.S. citizen and gives up his Australian citizenship. Act two, 10 years later, he's made so much money that he can afford to lose every penny he invests in a long-shot gamble on a TV network that puts the word news in its title, but is meant to do nothing but, first, elect Republicans, and second, destroy democracy. The network loses money at first, but then becomes a bigger and bigger profit center for Citizen Murdoch and adds billions to his wealth. Citizen Murdoch uses his network to elect the stupidest and most criminal president of the United States in history. Act three, the criminal president loses his reelection campaign and federal, state, and local prosecutors close in on him. At age 91, Citizen Murdoch completes his third divorce, this time from the second woman who Mick Jagger divorced 23 years earlier. And yes, Jerry Hall is available now to play herself. The Defenders of Democracy finally get Citizen Murdoch cornered and force him to admit under oath weeks before his 92nd birthday that what his network was force feeding its viewers was bullshit and damaging. And when asked why he didn't stop it, Citizen Murdoch says weekly, I could have, but I didn't. The end. All of the dialogue you just heard appears in the redacted public version of a brief filed by the Dominion Voting System Corporation and its lawsuit against the Fox Corporation for defamation because Rupert Murdoch's Fox network pumped out a steady stream of lies about Dominion voting machines in the overall campaign of lies that Donald Trump and Fox waged in their joint attempt to destroy American democracy and keep Donald Trump in the White House, even though he lost the election. I could have, but I didn't. Is the kind of admission that lawyers dream about. Rupert Murdoch testifying under oath in a deposition conducted by Dominion's lawyers when asked why he didn't stop the lies about Dominion that the lawsuit is about, said... I could have, but I didn't. In any other civil case, that would be an, admi an admission of liability that the defendant could not survive. But with that admission under oath, the only thing standing now between Rupert Murdoch and at least a billion dollar judgment against him in court is the First Amendment. The Fox defense, so far, rests entirely on the First Amendment journalistic principle that what Donald Trump was saying about the election was newsworthy and Fox had a First Amendment right to cover it uncritically. Dominion needs to prove that Rupert Murdoch and Fox executives and the Fox entertainers on television knew that it was all a lie, and they pushed it anyway. Dominion has taken the discovery process a long way to proving that everyone at Fox knew it was a lie. In Dominion's filing today, we learned the Fox lawyers were worried about Sean Hannity saying it will be impossible to ever know the true, fair, accurate election results. That's a fact. On November 5th, the Fox News lawyer emailed Hannity is getting awfully close to the line with his commentary and guests tonight. That same lawyer was asked in a deposition, should Fox broadcast election fraud allegations that it knows to be false? Answer no. A Fox executive was asked in a deposition, do you think that Fox has an obligation not to broadcast false claims to its audience? Answer yes. Dominion's filing revealed how Fox, which has absolutely no relationship to the news business, illicitly and secretly helped the Trump campaign 
by revealing confidential information about the Biden campaign's TV advertisement. During Trump's campaign, Rupert provided Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner with Fox confidential information about Biden's ads, along with debate strategy, providing Kushner a preview of Biden's ads before they were public. The Dominion filing shows that Rupert Murdoch never believed that there was the slightest irregularity in the 2020 presidential election. In December 2020, the Dominion filing shows that former Speaker of the House Paul Ryan, now a board member uh, at Fox, texted Rupert Murdoch and his heir apparent, son Lachlan Murdoch, that Donald Trump has, quote, quote, has actually convinced himself of this farce and will do more bizarre things to delegitimize the election. I see this as a key inflection point for Fox, where the right thing and the smart business thing to do line up nicely. He called for Fox to put forth solid pushback, including editorial, of Trump's baseless calls for overturning electors. And after receiving that text, Rupert Murdoch wrote to his son, call me later, Ray, Trump, and Paul. Trump on Saturday sounded really crazy. Two days after the January 6th attack on the Capitol, Preston Patton, a show business executive who had worked for Rupert Murdoch in the entertainment business, on page 13 of the filing, quote, sent Rupert an article from the Washington Post stating that the pro-Trump media world peddled the lies that fueled the Capitol mob. Fox News led the way. Patton followed up with an email stating, I do think Fox News needs a course correction. Rupert responded, Fox News, very busy pivoting. We want to make Trump a non-person. Make Trump a non-person. And there, right there, the movie Citizen Mur Murdoch swerves into the movie Frankenstein, where Rupert Murdoch has created the monster that he can no longer control and wants to make a non-person but he can't be caught by his Trump-loving audience in his effort to make Trump a non-person, as Rupert makes clear in a later email to his son saying, quote, Fox News, which called the election correctly, is pivoting as fast as possible. We have to lead our viewers, which is not as easy as it might seem. Rupert Murdoch spent decades injecting poison into his viewers poison that he refused to take himself. And when he wanted to nudge his viewers away from Trump, he didn't know how to do it. And he didn't blame any of his primetime entertainers for not even trying to. In an email to Paul Ryan after the January 6th attack on the Capitol, Rupert Murdoch said it was a, quote, wake-up call for Hannity, who has been privately disgusted by Trump for weeks, but was scared to lose viewers. So there's Rupert Murdoch, Sean Hannity's boss, the owner of Sean Hannity's microphone, saying that Sean Hannity has been privately disgusted by Trump for weeks. Another way of saying that is that Sean Hannity has been loudly lying to his audience about Trump for weeks. Privately disgusted? Sean Hannity? Privately? Sean Hannity plays a disgusted guy on TV every single night of his life. He plays a guy disgusted by something or everything on the left side of American politics. Disgust is Sean Hannity's brand. The good news is that Sean Hannity had the basic human decency to be disgusted by Donald Trump. The bad news is that Rupert Murdoch built a propaganda machine in which he and Sean Hannity could get very rich as long as they only privately were disgusted by Donald Trump. Same thing with Tucker Carlson, who was shown in a previous Dominion filing to beg the then more powerful, higher rated Sean Hannity to get a Fox reporter fired for accurately fact checking Donald Trump in a tweet, firing Firing was the very first impulse for the born-rich Tucker Carlson, 
who now makes tens of millions of dollars lying to Fox viewers every night, especially about his personal disgust for Donald Trump, that Tucker Carlson, who has never had a day of financial struggle in his life, that same Tucker Carlson had a first impulse of firing a reporter who in her lifetime will not earn the income Tucker Carlson gets in a year of lying for Rupert Murdoch's monstrosity that is now being exposed by the Dominion lawsuit. In his deposition, Rupert Murdoch was asked, what should the consequences be when Fox News executives knowingly allow lies to be broadcast? Answer, they should be reprimanded. They should be reprimanded, maybe got rid of. Rupert Murdoch is the top executive in that company. He knowingly allowed lies to be broadcast. By the Rupert rule, Rupert should be reprimanded and maybe got rid of. But everyone knows that will never happen because as everyone who works in that temple of lies knows, Rupert's rules do not apply to citizen Murdoch.